card number four is the Emperor. So the Emperor is the fourth card, trump card of the Major Arcana. And in traditional texts, it could be used for deviation. Now, on the Emperor card, lots of interesting things here. There's a lot of interesting symbology on this card. So we have um, a man sitting on a throne, um, very much regal. Um, it's not a king, that's the thing, it's an emperor, slightly different. So we have the emperor, which is showing here, he has, he's dressed in red, he has um, ram's head on his, um, on the actual arms of his, um, on his throne, and also at the top of the head. He also has a crown, which is very interesting because it's also, it's like hexagonal, so it's slightly different, and it's um, one, two, it's five. So it's about stability, which is quite interesting. That's number four, it's a card. It's the actual gems on it are five, and then he has um, this way of looking like someone who can, um, has the knowledge, and very much stability. Also, he's holding a sphere, which is to do with um, a solid gold scepter, but it's actually, instead of a scepter, it's actually, he's then got a, the, basically a form of the onk as well, which um, I will explain in a minute what that's all related to. Now, when we're looking at that, we also look at that, what is the emperor mean? What does it mean? What is the emperor mean? So, the emperor means a very many, a few things. So, let's have a look. So, the emperor is, authority, establishment, structure, and a father figure. So if we have, for example, with a person who is in a relationship and the emperor is there, that would usually not be, a, it could be a negative situation. It could mean that someone's a father figure to the person, or if someone is having an issue, then the father figure could be dictating what their life is about. That could be very much um, another thing. Also, when we're looking at that, the onk, which is the scepter in his right hand, and the globe, symbol of domination in his left, he sits atop a stark barren mountain, a sign of sterility of regulation. Now, the emperor is the absolute ruler of the world. Well, wouldn't you think a king is? But the king runs a kingdom, but the emperor is a ruler. It's a very different ideal. So, the, so the, if the empress is the mother archetype of the, of the Deharadek, the emperor is the father. Again, remember, this is always about divine feminine, divine masculine. It's always about the balance. So he sits upon a large throne, adorned with the ram's head. Now, the Aries, the ram's head, is also a connection to the planet Mars. So that would be, um, so when we're looking at the idea of his robe, he's a red robe. Robe, red robe indicates his power, his passion, and his energy for life. But underneath it, he wears a suit of armor, suggesting that he's protected from any threat. This is a very powerful card. His long white beard is also a symbol of age and wisdom. When anybody has long beards, I've got a little bit of white in my beard, but I ain't got the big beard yet. But it's um, the age and wisdom, and the gold crown is an authority figure who desires to be heard. Behind this throne is the mountains, and it's also mountain range symbolizes a solid foundation. And actually, if you look at it as well, be, beyond the mountain, there's also a river, which is about the flow of that. So when we're looking at the emperor, regardless, it's a fatherly role, but it doesn't mean if it's feminine or masculine. It's actually that fatherly role is providing for your family, protecting and defending your loved ones. And it's usually the breadwinner. So if someone's got that card comes up in their inner relationship, it could show that they're the breadwinner or the person who they're with is a breadwinner. But they could also be manipulating the situation because they're the breadwinner. They've got to be told. They've got to have control and authority. When you have a leadership role, you command respect, but it also means you row, you're firm, but fair. And the emperor is sometimes seen as a negative card, but it's not, it never is. It's about the idea of someone who has a system, has regulations, and knows how to create law, and actually abides by these principles, which is the hermetic principles. In the Kabbalah, when we're looking at the emperor, we're also looking at someone who's very strong. So a rabbi would be something like that, or someone who is a teacher would be very much the emperor. Um, and then what we're going to do is, when we're looking at this, so the other issue we have is, is when the emperor is reversed it indicates something like it, it's, it's when someone is reversed emperor it shows someone his excessive control lack of discipline and very inflexible and it's about dominance so when someone say if you've got a problem at work and that crowd reading and it comes up with the emperor is upside down i would guarantee you that your boss or the person you are under who's managing you 
is actually not playing fair. They're actually being inflexible. They're showing their, they've got very much very moody, all these different things. These are some things what this emperor can come up with. So the one thing with, when we're looking at that is reverse side, but then the, the practical of the, um, of the positive of the emperor is actually shows control. It shows that you're very much in control of who you want and that fatherly figure is that you can give advice. It's not the mentor as much as people would like to think it is. The mentor card is more in the minor arcana and I'll talk about that later when it's kind of like the king of pentacles and the king of wands, things like that. But the actual thing is the emperor is not the mentor. That's the next card which we'll talk about which is the um, higher fan which is that is the more of the mentor and I'm going to explain why there's a slight difference. The emperor is also another thing as well is that when someone is authoritative you have to look at that that emperor has that characteristics. So if you are interested in learning anything more about these cards um, I teach these tarot courses online and these are all done by Zoom and it's done by either group one-to-one -one, uh, so it's either one-to-one -one or it's by a group or it's self-study. Within this, also because of the authority and the establishment, I set up certain things that you, there has to be a regular timing every week. Everybody turns up. They have to be there because if it's a group, people are learning for each other and they actually read for each other and I see how they read each other. If it's one-to-one, -one, I can spend more time with you because I can go more into individual things, what you need to learn. And then the self-study is basically you have all the information to learn from and I will actually test you how much you know and how much you've really read. You can't really blag with me because I will pick it up.